Hi, good morning, everybody, and welcome back to today's webcast event brought to you by People Power. My name is Andrew Wilson, director of the Project Studio, who are the organizers of the event today. Uh, we promote and develop and organize the People Power Conference uh, in the Northeast region also. Throughout the day today, we're delivering a range of free 30 minute bite sized learning sessions from leading experts to help organizations of any size meet the new challenges that we all face. There's a core theme linking everything uh, that's being presented today, and that's the, the well being, development, and performance of our people. We're using the hashtag People Powered Business throughout the day, uh, so please feel free to join in the discussions on social media. We're presenting a range of topics such as uh, motivation, well being, and mental health, emotional intelligence, employee engagement, employer branding, communication, and responsible, effective leadership. So all of those sessions are being presented uh, during the day today at half past the hour. Uh, just a quick word about, about our sponsors. Uh, our event partner is Northumbria University, the national leader in business and enterprise that can bring a competitive edge uh, to everything that you do. Uh, a new headline sponsor for People Power this year is Westray Recruitment, a specialist recruitment partner, uh, which puts customer service at the heart of its mission. Our gold sponsor is Hive HR, based in Newcastle, an employee feedback platform and people science consultancy. We've also got a theme sponsor, Nesma, the Northeast Sales and Marketing Academy, who build marketing know-how. Uh, Nesma work with companies and individuals to keep them up to speed with contemporary marketing trends. Finally, uh, we've got an associate sponsor, Engage Northeast, which is delivered by Peak Performance Partnership. Engage Northeast is part of the National Engage for Success campaign and Peak Performance Partnership are the talent management consultancy who are the regional ambassador for that campaign. Before I introduce our next speaker, just a few technical notes for those of you who are joining new for this session. If you've got any questions or queries or comments, please just use the Q&A box within Zoom at the bottom of the Zoom screen. Uh, the chat box is disabled, so everything goes into Q&A, uh, anything to do with technical queries or questions for our, our next speaker, Emily, who I'll introduce shortly. Uh, please just use the Q&A and we'll be able to ask a few questions to Emily following her presentation. Uh, polling, there is some polling as part of Emily's presentation today also, uh, which is quite important. Now this is 100% anonymous, so please feel free to participate as fully and openly as possible in the polling and you'll see the prompts that come onto screen and Emily will talk you through the polling. The questions and the answers will allow you to interact uh, and be part of today's session too voice your opinions on the questions being uh, posed to you. Emily's details will obviously be shared uh, with you following today's session. And just uh, to repeat as well that People Power is CPD accredited. So any participant in the event throughout today in any of the sessions throughout the day will receive a CPD certificate by email following today's event. Feedback, please feel free to give us some feedback to the automated uh, feedback survey that follows this half hour session and also please participate in our SurveyMonkey questionnaire that we'll send out following uh, the webcast today. So our next speaker is Emily Pearson, who is MD of Our Minds Work. Emily is speaking about evaluating and support planning for staying mentally healthy. Emily is a visionary and thought leader in the corporate mental health field. She's a corporate mental health program expert with 20 years experience and qualifications enabling her to work uh, as a professional in mental health, substance misuse, and health and social care fields with organizations of any size. Emily, morning, how are you doing? Good morning. Oh, I hate hearing that time. 20 years working in the field it makes us feel very old, Andrew, but thank you for that introduction. <laughs> no problem at all. I'll leave everything to you, Emily, and enjoy your session, and I'll hopefully have time following that to ask you some questions on behalf of today's audience. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Let me just get my technology set up. Let's get the screen shared. So good morning to everybody. It's good to see so many people attending this morning, which is great. I think the numbers were tipping over 60 up there, which is really good to see. So hopefully this is going to work. It's being slow. There we go. We're up and running. 
So it's nice to see actually there's some people in the audience this morning who I do know. So hello to those who I do know. Lots of names that I don't know. So that may mean that you don't know very much about who I am and our minds work. Obviously, Andrew gave a little bit of an introduction. So I'll tell you a little bit more about our minds work. So our minds work are workplace mental health program specialists. So we design workplace mental health initiatives and programs, which are basically the aim is to create mentally healthier workplaces. And we do that by targeting everybody in an organization from CEO to frontline staff with different initiatives. And I'll tell you a little bit more about them at the end. What I'm really here to do today is to give you a couple of tools that you can use either for yourself or as a manager to engage with your team, or even if you are here from an HR perspective, that could be embedded across the whole of your workforce. So I'm going to be covering literally three, three topics today. So the first tool I'm going to explain is our mental health continuum model. This has been designed by the team at Our Minds Work to create a tool that can be very easy to use. And I'm going to explain how we use that so that you can evaluate your own mental health and we'll run a poll on that to see how you used it, but also how you can use it, use it during contact with your team to start a discussion around mental health. What can lead on from a discussion around mental health is how do we support people who do need additional support? So I'm then going to look at another tool called the Staying Well at Work Support Plan. So the Staying Well at Work Support Plan was designed by Our Minds Work to be a tool that is that has ownership for the employee. But once it's completed and the employee feels comfortable, they can share it with a manager or somebody else in the workplace that they can trust. Um, to collaborate on a support plan. I'm just going to remind you before we leave about stress risk assessments. Um, there has been a big increase in people reporting stress, especially work-related stress, with some of the huge changes that we've seen in the workplace over the past couple of months. It is a legal obligation, so I will give you a little bit of a reminder that they should be available in your workplace to complete with employees who may be experiencing work-related stress. And before I close for question and answers, I will leave you with some signposting to support as well, if you yourself need it, or somebody that you come across in discussions with your team, or even in your home life. So the first thing I'm gonna talk you through is our mental health continuum model. So the continuum model was really designed to support anybody to evaluate their own mental health. I think we're very, very good at evaluating our own mental health, our, our own physical health, but sometimes with our mental health, we don't get the same cues as our physical health would give us, like a cough or pain or bruising that tells us that something isn't quite right. Sometimes with mental health problems, it tends to be other people that will notice a change in us before we do ourselves. So the continuum model is based on self-evaluation. This is not about diagnosing yourself. We all know what happens when we start to try and diagnose ourselves. We start off with a little lump on our foot. We go on Dr. Google and within 10 minutes we need the foot amputating. Self-diagnosis is not great, but what is good is self-evaluation. So we just want to start off using this continuum just to get us to reflect a little bit about our own mental health and why we might need to evaluate it. So I just want you to use this yourself. Once you understand it yourself, then it becomes much easier for you to use it in collaboration with others. So a couple of questions there. Have you noticed a difference? Is this something that's changed in the way that you would normally feel? Have others commented on this? So have others noticed a change and actually they've been worried enough to say something? Are you concerned about that? Or is somebody else worried about it? And what's going on in your life right now? Have you experienced something that can cause chronic stress? It's been upsetting, like a relationship breakdown, potentially a loss of job, money troubles, even illness. And I think right now, during this COVID-19 pandemic, a lot of us could potentially be ticking a lot of those boxes that we've been experiencing these stresses. So then moving on to the evaluative tool, we can start to begin to look at the traffic light system. 
So I'm just going to explain this first as thinking about your physical health. You know what your physical health is like on a good day. You know when you're feeling physically fit and well. You probably also know when you're not quite feeling yourself and you've maybe got a bit of a common cold. We might know what we need to do to feel a bit better, you know, stay home, get an early night, take some Lensips. And we probably know the difference between when we're not feeling ourselves and we've got a common cold and actually that cold has turned into a chest infection and we're feeling unwell. When we're feeling unwell, if we have a chest infection and it's affecting our ability to go to work, maybe even get out of bed because we're so unwell, we probably at this stage need medical support and treatment. If we don't get the support and treatment that we need at that stage with a chest infection, it puts us at higher risk of it getting worse. It could turn into pneumonia and then we're really ill. We may be so unwell that we may need hospital treatment. So if we think about our physical health on this continuum, we can think about our, our mental health in the exact same way. So we can see on our continuum model here, we've got this traffic light system. And as we go through the model, you'll see that there's no mention of a diagnosis. This is about symptomology. What are my symptoms? Where am I on this continuum? And wherever I am, what do I need to do to get back down into that green section again? So think about yourself. What is you on a good day? So you on a good day will be different to me on a good day. So what we need to think about is what's your normal? I know we don't like to use the word normal, but it's your normal. What is normal for you? So we can see there, what's your normal sleeping patterns, your normal appetite? How regularly do you see friends? What are your normal energy levels like? And we generally know that's just me on a good day. That's me when I'm feeling mentally well. In the yellow section there, where we're maybe not quite feeling ourselves. We know we're not mentally ill, but what we're probably doing is reacting to stresses in our lives. And when we run these polls after this evaluation tool, we are seeing the majority of people in this area reporting to be in this area because of all of the stresses and pressures that are happening around us during this time. So we can see here, we're maybe having a couple of bad days, yeah? We've noticed that we're not sleeping very well. Maybe we're worrying a lot more than usual. Maybe we're starting to get irritable and snappy and it's starting to affect how other people see the changes in us. Maybe we're starting to feel a little bit overwhelmed with all of these stresses that we're experiencing. These are really, really common reactions. This is all just about being a normal human being that we react to stresses and pressures in our lives in this way. In the unwell section there, this is something a little bit different. So the difference between having a cold and, new, and, and a chest infection, this is the same with our mental health. In the unwell section, the orange section there, this hasn't just been a bad day or a bad week. This is where we're talking about maybe it's a bad couple of weeks, maybe it's even a month or longer. And these symptoms are maybe it's getting more severe or they're not going away. The symptoms will become so severe that it will affect somebody's ability to do normal day-to-day -day activities. That might be getting out of bed, looking after your physical health, even going to work. So we can see in that section there, we are now experiencing feelings like sadness, anxiousness that are not going away. We might notice a complete loss of appetite or overeating comfort foods. We might notice that we've seen an increase or a start to use alcohol and drugs as a coping mechanism as well. You know, at this point, just like if we had a chest infection, we would need professional care and treatment. We would need to speak to a GP or another medical professional so that we would be able to get a diagnosis if we need one or some kind of therapy to might help us manage those symptoms. Because again, what can happen is if we don't look after our mental health at that point, we can become ill. And at the red end of the scale is definitely where we want to keep people out of. This is where people are experiencing severe mental illness, potentially experiencing thoughts of suicide or even planning suicide as well. So we, we can see how this continuum works. 
So I just want to get a little bit of a gauge on how you understood this and run a little bit of a poll. So the poll is literally going to be the question, using the mental health continuum model, where did you evaluate yourself on that model? So like Andrew said, it is anonymous and nobody will know what you're actually voting for. Um, so we've got green, I am mentally well. Yellow, I'm reacting to stresses in my life. Orange, I'm struggling with my mental health or red, I need immediate help and support. So you should just be able to click the little circle of what, which one you want to evaluate your mental health in today using that continuum model. We'll give people just 60 seconds to do it so we don't take up too much time. I've checked mine and I've uh, checked mine with the green section today. Today feels like a really good day for me and I'm feeling quite mentally well, very motivated, normal energy levels, had a great night's sleep last night, got things to do today, but I'm feeling pretty good about them. So hopefully we should be able to begin to see the results from the poll. Well, we're waiting for those results. Oh, there we go. Okay. So the results we have, and exactly as I expected it to, the majority of people who voted, 58% said that there were yellow reactant stresses in your life. This is really, really normal and common reaction to have to what we're experiencing right now on top of our normal daily stresses before COVID-19 even hit. We've got 37% in the green, mentally well, brilliant, how do you stay there? And we've got 5% who feel as if they evaluated themselves in the orange section that they're struggling with their mental health. So I, those people in the yellow and orange, what I want you to think about today is, what do I need to do to get back down into the green section? And if you're in the green section, what do I need to do to stay here? So thank you for sharing. Um, your evaluation on that. I'm going to give you a little bit of an idea of what you can do to look after your mental health as well. So as you can see with a continuum model, we go beyond just evaluation. We actually go into action planning. What do I need to do in these sections to get well again? And what works for one may not work for another. So it's about finding things that we can do that work for us. But there are a couple of kind of normal themes here, very kind of common themes to use, is generally looking after your physical and mental health, diet, nutrition, sleep, exercise, all of those things are really, really important that we keep on top of. Talking to somebody who we can trust for support, even finding an expert that can help us. So we're not all experts in what we're experiencing. Is there somebody out there that you can call upon to help? Do you need support from other people? So do you need to seek medical help? Do you need to seek support from the workplace? You may need reasonable adjustments, especially people who evaluated themselves in the orange section there. It may be that you could be diagnosed with a mental health problem and need reasonable adjustments. So there are things that we can do to look after our mental health. So getting some support is really important generally looking after our mental health, having somebody to talk to and looking after our physical health as well. And just a couple of numbers there, I'll, like 111 and 999, I will cover those in more detail at the end. So to move us on from this, what we want to be able to do is if we do need help, that we can have a tool to complete so that we can collaborate together with a, a GP or even somebody in the workplace to get help but also how do we create our own plan? So this is a Staying Well at Work support plan. It's gonna pull back up to the top. It is designed for you to complete it. You have ownership of this. This is your Stay Well at Work support plan. And it's a complete wellness tool that covers everything that we need to do to stay well at work. I'm gonna run through the questions. While I'm asking the questions, Think about what you would put down in the Staying Well at Work support plan, and then we're just going to do a little bit of a poll at the end. So what am I like when I'm feeling mentally well? 
what is your normal? Now I've just tried to get you to think about what is your normal? What do, what are you like when you're in that green section? And like I said, it'll be different for everybody. But how do you normally feel? How do you normally behave? When we know what somebody else's normal is, especially from a manager perspective, it's then much easier for us to, to notice that there's a change and somebody's moving out of that green section into the yellow section or further up. Question number two, what do I need to do to keep myself mentally well while I'm at work? What works for you? If you had type one diabetes to keep yourself physically well at work, you would take your medication, you would have snacks available in case you needed them. You know, when it comes to our mental health, what else can we do in the workplace that keeps us mentally well? So that might be like taking regular breaks. For me right now, working from home, um, I'm spending a lot of time on my own. It's to make sure that I've got, I've got a couple of Zoom meetings in with friends and family at the end of the day so that I do feel as if I'm having some form of face-to-face -face contact with people. So what, what can we do that helps us to keep us mentally well, especially when we're at work? Is there anything that might happen at work that could affect my mental health? So think about your workplace, especially right now. What's going on in your workplace, which may even be your home, that could have a negative impact on your mental health? If that's something to do with work-related stress, a manager or an employer does have a legal responsibility to carry out stress risk assessments. So this question fits really well with the stress risk assessment process as well. But being able to identify any of these triggers can help people just to work together to minimise some of those risks in the workplace or even remove them, especially if it's things like bullying and relationship issues at work that can affect people's mental health. What or who could help me if I experience these things? So if you're starting to experience these things, who can I go to for help? What can help us? So this might be people in the workplace, especially if you have mental health advocates who can listen and signpost colleagues who are experiencing these things. Maybe as a manager, you're using reasonable adjustments or supportive measures. When I am becoming unwell, what am I like? What are you gonna notice? So when are you gonna notice the changes that say I'm in the yellow, in the, on the green, orange or the, the red section. So what will you see? And those changes will be different for everybody. So then if you do see these changes, what do I want you to do if you're concerned? As my manager, if you're concerned about the changes that you've seen, how do I want you to respond? And it may be that I'm happy to tell you that I take medication every day. If I haven't taken my medication, you might know that I get a little bit irritable and a bit drowsy on an afternoon. I don't mind you just asking us, have you had your medication today? This will completely depend on rapport, but what this does, it gives ownership and um, gives the employee the ability to say, this is what I want you to do, not you saying, this is what I think we should do. And the last page is your staying well at work support plan. Things I need to do every day to still stay well at work and things I need others to do to support me when I am at work, say who and what. So that's the staying well at work support plan. So thinking about what I've just gone through there and thinking about how you could use this for yourself, we're just gonna run another little poll. The poll is literally kind of yes or no, not sure or answer. If you completed the Staying Well at Work support plan, would you feel comfortable sharing it with your manager? You know, this is a really important part of the Staying Well at Work plan and for keeping people mentally well at work is that people feel comfortable sharing this information with a manager or as somebody who can help like, help like HR. So, if we get lots of no's here, I'm not sure. As a workplace, we never really need to start to think about why is that? Why, are, why might we not want to share it? Is the stigma in the workplace? Um, does my manager never talk about mental health? So hopefully we'll be able to start to see some of the results there to get a good idea and just a little bit of a temperature check on how do people feel about speaking to the managers about their mental health problems. So we can see there we've got 67% have said yes. You know, that is brilliant. I think if we ran this poll about four years ago, it wouldn't have been very high at all. I think we do, we have made large strides in reducing stigma in the workplace and opening up these conversations. 
But saying that, we still have 19% who said no and 14% who said not sure. We still have a lot to do to completely reduce stigma in the workplace so that people can feel comfortable talking about mental health and asking for the support that they need. We still have a lot to do. Hopefully you can think about what more you can do in your workplace. So they're the two tools. I'm just going to go back to the slide for the slideshow for the next couple of slides. What we've done there is we've given you a tool that can be used as an evaluation tool. Brilliant way of starting a conversation with an employee by giving them the continuum model, you know, explaining a little bit about how it works and then using it during your one to ones and check ins. It's as easy as saying, just want to check in on how you're doing today. You know, where are you on the mental health continuum? The answer, all it needs to be is a colour. I'm in the orange today. And the next question should be, okay, what does that mean for you? What do we need to do to get you back into that green section? And then we can look at the support plan. That follows in with the Staying Well at Work support plan. And this is a collaborative tool that follows on from that conversation. But one thing that I did mention in there was about stress risk assessments. So just as a reminder, right now we are seeing huge increases in reporting stress. As you saw, the majority of people reported that they were in that yellow section. Some of those stresses are down to work-related stress. It is a legal obligation to complete stress risk assessments and act on them. So my question to you for this next poll is really, um, do you have a stress risk assessment poly policy and procedure in your workplace? Um, you know, do you know of it? Is it being used? Um, yes, my workplace uses stress risk assessments and has a stress management policy. No, I don't know. So this is another statistic that we sometimes see that the majority of the answer would there would be no or don't know, which is quite worrying because this is a legal obligation. And right now, people are experiencing more work-related stress than ever. So stress risk assessments can be done um, on individuals, with individuals as a, as a collaborative tool. Stress risk audits can also be conducted, especially before and after major change. And right now, we are definitely experiencing major change. By doing overall audits of whole teams, departments, and even workplaces, this can really help us to get a grip on, you know, what are people experiencing? You know, what can we plan for as we're going through these changes? So it'd be great to see the results and hear the results here. 47% not surprised and says no, and 19% says I don't know. So this is really worrying for us, especially as it is a legal obligation. And um, it's not pretty when it ends up in the courtroom because ultimately what stress, work-related stress can do can cause psychological injuries to your employees. A psychological injury is just as important as a physical injury and we need to be looking at it that way. So thank you very much for being so honest with that one. Thank you. Well, how can we help? And I just want to tell you a little bit more about what our minds work do, just in case you sat there going, oh God, we need to do something. What do we need to do? How do we do it? We are experts in this, so don't panic. We are here to help. There's a couple of ways that we can help. We've got a couple of programs that are running currently at the moment. So we have the first in England, Workplace Mental Health Leadership Apprenticeship, and this is levy funded. So if you've been struggling to get your employer to, um, to find a budget for mental health and you have a levy fund, this is a great way to actually provide leadership training specifically around workplace mental health and it's a level four diploma. We also can provide accredited mental health training for managers. Managers are the people that should be doing those stress risk assessments. So we do cover um, stress risk assessments in the manager training as well. And it is accredited as a level three. 
maybe if you're thinking about putting those mental health advocates in place so we don't just provide the training we provide the whole blueprint of how to safely implement this service into your workplace and from there once you've got them trained and they're fully functioning safely practicing in the workplace we then provide a membership program to support them um, in more longer term so we do um, development with them to get additional training. We um, engage in reflective practice sessions with them on a yearly basis. So we get really involved in supporting the people who are in those mental health advocate and first aid roles. What we found really helpful for people right now though is our mental health awareness webinars. They're very short, they're very to the point, they're given the tools like the continuum model, the staying well at work support plan, we're collaborating this together with managers, we're reminding of stress risk assessment and this really is what people need to deal with the here and now. So these have been particularly, particularly popular for us over the past couple of months. And if you're thinking about doing a stress audit because of major change that you're about to go through, but you don't have a clue where to start or what to do, give us a call because we do have solution focused stress audits programs that we can, we can help with. And the basis of all that is about keeping yourselves and your employees mentally well. So if you identified yourselves in the green and the yellow sections, there's lots of information in the blue section of this slide about how do we keep ourselves mentally well when we're reacting to stresses or when we are mentally well, how do we stay there? You know, the Mind website is full of information and support. It's really comprehensive. And all of these websites and contact numbers have specific information around COVID-19 and mental health, COVID-19 and learning disabilities, autism helpline, COVID-19, it's all interrelated. If you were in the orange or the red section, maybe you need to think about, you know, how do I find the medical support that I need? Um, am I keeping up, up with any treatment plans that are already in place? Does my treatment plan maybe need changing? So I would recommend that you speak to your GP first off. Also, there are people there that can help at any point in time. I know how hard it is to get in touch with GPs right now, um, or even just to see one. So don't forget that the Samaritans are there and they're free call, 365 days a year, constantly there to help people. If somebody needs urgent care that isn't life-threatening, just call 111. If it is a medical emergency and someone's life is at risk, it may be that you or somebody else is unable to keep yourself safe, just call 999 or go to A&E. If somebody needs crisis support services, those services can be located on the NHS services search website. Um, and I'm sure we might find out in a moment uh, from Andrew, Andrew that these slides and the tools that I've sent, that I've covered today can be sent through to you all to use. Um, it'd be great to hear your, um, your stories of how you've used them as well. If you do want to get in touch and tell us your experiences. So, that really is the end of me talking, which is great. I did have a, uh, oh, it's all right. I did have a question and answer slide, but it seems to have disappeared. <laughs> Emily, thanks a lot. No worries. That was brilliant, thanks. Yeah, I was just looking at the Q&A, but we don't have any Q&As from the audience, so everything must have been abundantly clear, and it was to me, anyway. Good. And thanks a lot, and I was gonna ask you, but you you answered that question around those two tools. The, there was the mental health continuum, wasn't there? And then there's the My Stay Well at Work support plan. So we can pass both of those on to the participants, presumably. Yes, that would be brilliant. And you know, the tools are there to help. And I think what we saw through the polls was that people understood the use of it. It was very, very easy for people to evaluate themselves. Yeah. So, you know, we, we created them to be that simple. Um, we, we want to find easier ways to have these conversations. And the, um, the continuum model was really designed by us with men in mind. Um, we started to get a lot of um, questions.
questions from other charities around, you know, what, what can we do to get our men to open up more about their mental health? So we actually trialed the continuum model with um, some of the service users from the Man Health charity. And they said, you know, it really was a light bulb moment. It just clicked straight away. They could instantly identify where they were. They didn't have to go into depth about, you know, what kind of words can I use? Because some of the terminology and language can be very, very difficult to explain uh, around mental health if you're not a mental health professional to explain what you're experiencing. Uh, they're certainly very accessible, aren't they, for any yeah. uh, employee or any employer to, to use and to, uh, to get value from straight away. That's really good. And I thought the polls are really interesting as well. You know, the the stress risk assessment poll and the stress management policy you know two yeah. thirds either didn't have one or didn't know that they had one so that was quite revealing wasn't it yeah but not a surprise and uh, quite sadly we've seen that those statistics similar to that for the past five years they don't seem to be moving very far which is quite a bit of a worry for me i think we need to do more to promote the use of stress risk assessments and I think HSE are trying to, um, to come down a little bit harder on organisations. They have actually at the beginning of the year released um, a, a helpline that, that employees can call to report work-related stress not being tackled where that that was never there before and they are strengthening some of the, some of the legislation and um, that says that not only does a stress risk assessment have to be at least offered and, and completed, is that the action has to follow. If you've completed a stress risk assessment with somebody, you can't just put it in a drawer and forget about it. You've got to have that action plan behind it to really help people so that a psychological injury, you know, is prevented and they are preventable. Absolutely. OK, so thank you very much. Yeah, we've had a couple more questions inputted as well, just one around copies of the slides. So yes, we'll be sending copies of the slides, that's no problem. Um, jo has asked that she unfortunately had to drop out for a meeting, will there be a replay? So we have recorded this session, so we'll be sending the link to everyone, if that's okay, Emily, for Great people stuff. on your commentary, which was superb uh, throughout the presentation. Uh, yeah, and just a, a few uh, compliments as well on your, on your presentation, which, have oh, come you. Through, which is great to see. So on behalf of everybody, Thanks once again for joining us today and I look forward to working with you a lot more in the future. Thanks, Emily. Great, so that was Emily Pearson from Our Minds Work. Next up, we're talking about emotional intelligence. At uh, half past 11, we're gonna invite Gary Hosey from EI Company, a specialist in emotional intelligence to speak about developing particularly emotionally intelligent leaders uh, uh, with reference to, again, the challenges that we've all faced throughout the coronavirus crisis and uh, obviously going forwards as well. So Gary Hosey, 11.30, Emotionally Intelligent Leaders is our next session. See you all then.